Hello, but hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting and a very long episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's weekend recap, all the rumors out there, the roster changes, all the drama out there will be covered in today's episode and also time link down below. So hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, which I do want to forewarn you guys, I'm not in any way against this character in the CSGO scene. In fact, he's one of the most notable commentators of all time in CSGO, a great commentator out there. And I do think he still has a future in the scene. Of course, I'm talking about Sadokis. If you guys heard about his recent comments this past weekend, while he was intoxicated, he did say a few things live on Twitch. I'll show you guys the clips here shortly. I do also want to say very shortly and kind of ahead of time to also tell you guys a lot of people out there do make mistakes. I myself have made a lot of mistakes inside this community. A lot of people in this community like Sadokist have made big mistakes like this and I'm not trying to make excuses for the guy. He was intoxicated. What he said was completely wrong and is really there's no excuse for it. On top of that though we've also had other pro players out there. I'm not going to name names here. We've had many pro players say similar things to this in the scene itself and they have survived this. So I do think he has a, he has a future in CSGO. I do also expect some kind of response though from organizers out there or at least a response from himself in terms of apologies. Here's what Sadokis had to say while intoxicated on stream this past weekend. It gets a bit vulgar. Here's the clips. I am literally going 50% and I am the best at esports. Wait till I go 100% you fucking nigger. I mean, what's your opinion on Don Hatchie? That guy could go fucking die and I would literally celebrate it. You, you're a fucking cunt. Go fuck yourself. Ban yourself from the CS community. Maybe, maybe put a belt around your neck and jump off a cliff with that belt still attached. That would be better for everyone. So again, to recap, I'm not making excuses for the guy. Obviously, he went above and beyond what should be said ever on stream in terms of a vulgarity there. And of course, directing at Don Hossi, if you guys don't know him, I'll just link his Twitter on screen for all of you. That's who he was actually talking about in terms of uh, he should go kill himself. Um, he actually celebrate that killing. Now, obviously, he was intoxicated. There's no excuse there. And things were brought to a way, way bigger thing that ever should have been said on stream. And again, here's also other commentators, other people in the scene, their response to this. It actually broke news. And again, I'm not going to put this in the title or the thumbnail. I'm sure you guys are aware of that because this does not deserve any unwanted attention. Only CSGO people should know about this. It did blow up, of course, because people are taking this chance to hate on the guy. I do want to say I think he has a future in CSGO. I do believe, though, of course, one, he should make an apology, and two, there might be some kind of, uh, I guess, a, maybe a, a term of time ban in, in terms of organizers out there, maybe a three-month ban, maybe a six-month ban, maybe a set amount of events to actually ban from him in CSGO. I do think he'll survive this, though, and I, again, I'm not going to make excuses for the guy, but it was obviously a pretty bad thing. Now, moving on, though, to our next story, also very big, of course. Uh, everyone hoping it was actually an April Fool's joke was the seven-day CSGO trade ban. It kind of neglected out there. If you guys saw the update, I'll show it on screen for all of you. Some big updates were actually made to other maps, like Dust2 out there, also Canals, and of course, uh, other remakes as well. So that was actually neglected by the bigger update. Of course, now when you trade CSGO items to anyone else out there or receive a trade, that trade is actually now, you cannot trade that item for seven days. So it's pretty much known as the seven-day trade ban now, which many people thought was targeted at gambling sites out there. Although Valve goes on to state a lot of scams out there which are somehow redirected or actually avoided by this seven day trade ban. Now a lot of people are very curious about this, how this actually stops scams. We have yet to hear about that from Valve, actually expand on what scams are out there that are actually being stopped by this. I myself can't think of too many of the thousands of thousands of scams out there. I really can't see how a seven day trade ban on item would stop a lot of those scams. On top of that, Valve goes on to state that a majority of the trades out there, are items that are traded, are actually held for more than a week. So I guess that would make sense. I would kind of, yeah, of course, I asked for evidence about that as well because a majority of people who trade items out there who either trade or gamble do not hold their items for more than seven days. I know a majority of my inventory, I move back and forth between Steam and of course OP skins back and forth between players as well. A majority of my items for sure do not be are not held for more than eight days. I don't have like a set loadout whatsoever. So I'd love to see evidence about that of how many items out there are actually held in an inventory for more than seven days. If that does include of course all the gambling site inventories, all the trading site inventories, even then I really can't see that being true. So on top of that though of course Valve, no big response yet guys. Everyone hoping it's an April Fool's joke. It seems to be true for now, but I do want to link the email down below for all of you guys, as well as the petition to revert this overall thing. So as of right now, guys, we're seeing a big transition of sites out there like CSGO Empire, like WTF Skins, like CSGO Magic. All those sites and more are now transitioning, guys, from CSGO Skins to PUBG Skins. If you are aware of this, when Valve made the update, this seven-day trade ban was only for CSGO items. PUBG items, every other item out there is actually still free game. So a lot of sites right now are now taking PUBG items. If you guys are actually you know, certified or purified 
gamblers out there. Simply convert your CSGO skins into PUBG items and you can still gamble out there. There's plenty of ways. Also, sites like CSGO Empire are already taking CSGO deposits and other sites out there are expanding, guys. It should be sometime next week. They're going to now enable CSGO withdrawals once again. So, as, it, as I, I just don't understand Valve anymore, guys. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about this? I know there's offense, obviously, about this topic. I do think still, though, in my own opinion, I think a majority of people out there agree this is a pretty bad update. It does require some changes, although there's definitely an argument as to why this would be helping, you know, CSGO go back to its roots, right? Of course, when Counter-Strike originally started, it, was, it wasn't about the skins. It was about the game itself, although it could be easily argued, guys, that this economy, these skins, they, their value do thrive the game. They drive the game, and without it, the game will suffer. So I want the, I want the longevity of the game over anything else. So I do want this, uh, this trade ban to be reverted or at least changed. So I'll link the petition down below. I'll link the email down below. If you guys want to change, do me a favor. Do yourselves a favor. Email Valve. Sign the petition to revert this trade ban or at least change it. Make it shorter. Do something about it, guys. There's definitely a better way to try and, I guess, halt gamblers. And still, even then, guys, this update does not stop gambling whatsoever. Gambling will still go on, but this, this, this then just goes on to hurt other communities out there, like the entire trading community. This hurts them immensely more than it hurts the gambling side of things. Anyway, though, no updates right now, guys. Hope it's an April Fool's joke. If it's not, like I don't think it is, well, then we're going to have to get it changed ourselves and do something about it. And amidst all the rumors out there, of course, today being April Fool's, you guys are going to see a lot of jokes, a lot of trolls out there. The best part about today's episode, if I get anything wrong, I'm going to blame April Fool's. I'm going to discuss right now, though, all the confirmations out there, all the roster changes, all the rumors out there as of right now. Of course, we'll touch on this in the future when everything is confirmed. As of right now, though, the one thing confirmed we do have is the future SK Gaming lineup. And please give, pay attention as well, guys. In the future, in about July, this team will be joining Team Immortals, or at least that speculation. So the current roster would now be adding Stewie2K from Cloud9. The current roster on screen for all of you will be the new SK Gaming, but in July, in a few months, when all their contracts do expire, it's expected this current SK Gaming lineup will join Team Immortals and Noah Winston to actually become that new Brazilian Immortals lineup. So on top of that, though, that's the only confirmed roster, guys, with Stewie2K leaving Cloud9. We also had in breaking news this past weekend, Skadoodle announced his inactivity from that roster. So a, a big deg degradation ever since that major win and back in Boston a few months ago, we are now seeing almost half the Cloud9 roster change up. It does seem speculation and rumors point to this, guys. With Skadoodle being on the bench and Stewie2K going to SK Gaming, Cloud9 will have two newest members, one of them being former Liquid JDM, being of course their primary opper, and their newest IGL will be Exist from NIP. So again, a very, very random assortment of players there, guys. Of course, some great past experience there, uh, but again, you got to be worried about this. Of course, a lot of skeptics out there going forward, a lot of doubters for the future Cloud9 roster. I do have to say, I myself am a skeptic about this. Them changing nearly half their roster just after winning a major, it's going to be in insane to see how these guys do come back, how they can form in time for the major qualifier and again, the major itself. So, best of luck to Cloud9 going forward. On top of that, guys, SK Gaming's lineup has been confirmed. With Taco leaving, though, where will he join is the real question. It seems right now all answers do point to Team Liquid. He's been tweeting out a bunch of things like this, guys, a bunch of maybe some trolls out there, but it does seem he denied Cloud9's offer very briefly after short discussion, and Taco may be joining Liquid in place of his fellow Brazilian brother that will be Steel. As leaked in this in this screenshot on screen for all of you guys, a tweet about all the Liquid players actually going to a movie, and as you guys can see, in hand, arm in arm, over his shoulder, it does seem, though, as of right now, rumors to replace him, it will be Taco replacing Steel on that Liquid roster. So some big shuffles going on right now, guys. It's going to be insane to see how these rosters do play out. That's all the roster rumors for now, though. On top of that as well, we had Decay report this. I'll link his tweet down below. It does seem Smuya, the UK CS pro player, is making even bigger moves. And I, I say that very ironically. Yes, I mean big moves. He might be joining Team Big sometime soon. He's also been tweeting out things like this, guys. He has big future plans. And again, every time I say big, it's, it's not really on purpose. But yes, it does seem UK CS Smuya is making the biggest moves of any of his hometown players. And he might be joining Team Big sometime soon. And also, very lastly, I do apologize, guys. There's been so many Brazilian shuffles out there. We still do have Now Tem Como. Now Tem Como did not do too well in ESCA Mountain Dooley because they were, you know, obviously very busy trying to, you know, maybe work out some future contracts with SK Gaming. That's the expected future roster of SK Gaming. Although they did lose the two twins, guys. Henny and Lucas have now officially left Now Tem Como. No one knows who they're going to play for, but rumors have it, guys, yes, that it actually lined up on screen for all of you. Phelps, uh, FNX, and Bit. Bit from being uh, formerly of Team One, another Brazilian team out there. It does seem they're going to try and acquire our newest member with KNG. Now, what confuses me so much about this is because all the hype around KNG, why he went to Virtue Gaming, his current Brazilian roster, who just finished building their entire team around KNG, the only reason they actually signed him was to build a team around this guy, and he might ditch them right away. Now, it does seem, of course, that could in include some contractual disputes and disputes in general about a guy who went and signed with the organization just to build around him, and less than a month later, he's going to be leaving them for now Tem Como, because now Tem Como could be joining the SK Gaming organization 
organization sometime soon once they announce a full roster. So as of right now, rumors say this, guys. Now Tem Como, FNX, Bit, and Phelps could be joined by KNG and a fifth member out there, which could be, of course, Steel from Team Liquid or a handful of options out there in the, in the of course, the Brazilian scene. And they will be joining SK Gaming's roster. That's also now Tem Como, the X Hunter Thieves roster, pretty much. At, at least they, lo they lost the Twins, though, and no one knows where the Twins will go to play. So, so many Brazilian players out there. You could say top tier Brazilian players out there. X Hunter Thieves roster and SK Gaming's X roster, X Liquid players, all formerly of Brazilian, uh, Brazilian descent, are out there, guys, assuming and ascending these teams. And no one knows the configurations right now. So it does seem, though, now Tem Como is trying to acquire KNG. Will he ditch Team Virtue or Virtue Gaming? It's definitely possible. That's it for rumors, though, for now, guys, and roster change news. Anything else that comes out today could be a troll or a joke. And we'll touch on this tomorrow again to try and clarify what's going on. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, this past weekend, we had many tournaments, many qualifiers out there. One in particular, though, was actually Copenhagen Games, hosting both a male and a female tournament, guys. And some great and kind of really shocking news out there. First of all, in the male scene, it was actually Team Imperial taking it all. That's a UK slash EU team, uh, Tenski Asilian. That's actually, if you guys recognized it, the former Man's Not Hot roster. That was actually signed to Imperial, and they're starting off a great roster together underneath that Imperial name, guys. They take your Copenhagen Games male title, and they beat some astonishing teams here. Not only did they beat Team Heroic in a best of three, they also swept Team North in a best of three as well. So really kind of astonishing results there, guys, as we do see a new rising UK team or UK partial team out there in Team Imperial. You guys recognize them formally as Man's Not Hot. So that's really cool to see as well. On top of that, on the female side, very, very surprising so far. I've talked to you guys in the past about Giuliano, Zaz, Vilga, their new additions from CLG. That's actually Potter. That's not the Team Res female gaming team, uh, formerly known as the Dynasty Female. Then they actually got signed by Res organization over there. They still were formerly the best female team throughout 2017 and still, in my own opinion, are throughout 2018, but have yet to win an event. It was actually last weekend at Katowice. Kind of disappointing finish there. And actually this weekend as well at Copenhagen Games, they finished second place to a surprise team out there. That's the Danish team Singularity Female over there. They actually beat Res Gaming in that best of three. So si surprisingly so far, guys, throughout 2018, your best female team out there, in my own opinion, have yet to win an event. They're kind of like the phase clan of the female scene right now, but still great results, guys. Great surprising finishes so far in the female and the male scene, especially if you guys consider the male scene at Copenhagen Games, your lower tier male, lower tier male teams. We're going to see some surprising uprise here as we do have, a, a, I guess you could say, North falling off, Taroic falling off, and a new rising team out there in the UK scene slash EU scene. That's in Team Imperial. So watch out for them in the future, guys. They take home your $50,000 male prize, and then we do have Team Singularity taking home your $15,000 female prize at the Copenhagen Games. Very lastly, though, for today's episode of CSK News, kind of some sadder news out there. We don't see too many streamers being let go from, from organizations. It's actually Pterodactyl actually let go from the Dignitas stream team. She's been a full-time streamer for them for quite some time now, so I'm not really sure the full details as to why she was released, and it's always sad to see a full-time streamer go. There's other full-time streamers out there. You could say Swag is one, uh, alongside many other people out there who've been signed full-time streaming in CSGO, so it's always sad to see one go, uh, you know, potentially uh, you know, changing careers from CSGO. So, best of luck to her in the future, guys. Hope you all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. If you guys did get trolled, you guys did get April fooled, leave a comment down below. What fooled you guys? What did you fall for? And also leave a comment down below uh, what your favorite story was today. So as always, I'll see you guys all tomorrow to clarify what the jokes were, what the trolls were. Hope you guys all enjoy. My name is Jake, I'm right like you, and uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, guys.